the biggest arts festival in the world, a unique and diverse celebration of culture, or a monstrous machine suffocating artists. Year on year it grows, making over £140 million for the economy, hosting 24,000 artists in nearly 3,000 shows. And this year, one of Britain's leading playwrights will open the festival, calling for performers to be daring in the current climate. What's exciting about The Fringe is that it's about new work and new ideas and, and people being inventive and creative. And I think that's what we desperately need at the moment. Uh, you know, we've, we've had this massive financial meltdown. Nobody quite knows the way forward. And I think people thinking in a fresh way is desperately what society needs. One particularly outspoken theatre producer has criticised The Fringe, saying it's grown to such an extent that it's exploiting talent rather than promoting it. I think as a system it reflects uh, a society that isn't very fair and it's quite interesting to look at it as a microcosm of society so it is fundamentally um, a lot of people, the performers who are paying to play and the people who get wealthy out of it are the city of Edinburgh, um, some of the venue bosses. Maria Miller, the Culture Secretary, recently said the arts must focus on economic, not artistic value, something the first female winner of the Perrier Award vehemently disagrees with. Edinburgh is a magnificent beast. I mean, it's almost mythical. It's something that rears up out of the cobbles every August and you just have to salute it. And where is Maria Miller? Has she ever been here? The woman absolutely depresses me to within an inch of my soul. I don't know what she's doing in the job. The Royal Mile is a shop window for many of the performers to tout their wares. The good, the bad and the downright weird, flyering and sometimes even begging the public to see their shows. A lot of it is done for the love of doing it, um, but I think that's what this profession has come to a lot of the time at the moment. It's very hard with budget cuts and things like that. We've worked all year towards saving up to, um, to be able to come to the Fringe and showcase what we've got, so um, it's just a really good experience that I think um, is worth it in the long run. There's quite a few people who make quite enough money just from the bums on seats on the day. So whether it's celebrating or suffocating, the Fringe's future will depend on whether the performers and the public continue to come. Lucy Cotter, Sky News in Edinburgh.